We're gonna give you all of the secrets behind hitting harder for football, and we're gonna start right now. So that first key factor, when we're looking at how to hit harder for football, we've gotta analyze three specific factors, and that's gonna go into that first key lift. The first key lift that we're gonna give you is going to be a low hang clean. Now, a lot of football players do low hang cleans, but the big factor here is that we have to execute a low hang clean in a full catch position. And this goes back to those three key principles. That first key principle is we've got to look at shin angles. If the shin angle changes, that's going to help us accelerate. And if we can accelerate, now we can make contact a bit faster. When we make contact a bit faster, that's the key factor behind hitting harder. That second key factor is going to be dynamic trunk control. And so when I train NFL linebacker Jan Johnson, one of the big things that he said to me around actually hitting individuals harder was that he shared a story of getting folded like an accordion, he referred to it as a lawn chair, from Jonathan Taylor when they played Wisconsin. Okay, so Jan was a linebacker next to Micah Parsons at Penn State, and Jonathan Taylor absolutely steamrolled him. And the main secret sauce from Jonathan Taylor's big hit was that Jan said he felt like he was hitting an absolute wall. Okay, he just felt like he was getting hit by something extremely stiff. And that goes back to that dynamic trunk control. And then that final key factor is that accelerating at the very last second is going to lead to that higher power output. So when we're looking at that low hang clean, we're going to be changing our shin angle. We're going to be absorbing force very rapidly. We're going to be training that dynamic trunk control and that's gonna lead to hitting harder. So you can do low hang cleans for six doubles, seven singles, eight doubles on the minute. All of these reps and sets could help you become a better hitter out on the football field. So the second big factor is that we've got to be twitchy. We have to recruit as quickly as possible. When I stood on the sideline of a Michigan Penn State game, one thing that I was able to do was sit there and analyze offensive linemen, the D tackles, and then even look at linebackers coming off the edge and count what is that time before they would make contact. Obviously, I wasn't counting mentally. What I was using was my iPhone to track the movements, and then I would put it into my app, and then I could see how long it would take until the hats were making contact. And that would be about 0.4 to 0.45 seconds. And this goes back to steep shin angles, having mobile hips, and having that dynamic trunk control. And so that's where that second key plyometric series comes in, is that we're gonna focus on two things. The first plyometric series is going to be a stair jump. So if we're looking at stair jumps here, one of the best factors is that you have to change your shin angle, okay? So you're doing a counter movement and we're going forward. If we can think about reacting quickly and going from zero to 100 as fast as possible, that's gonna lead to that better contact. If we have trunk control, we can handle that recovery and cycle through as fast as possible. So we're gonna be here and you can watch as I jump here, okay? I'm projecting myself forward. So we wanna think about project forward, go. Project forward, go. So when you're looking at something like bleacher jumps or stair jumps, that repetitive motion is going to help you with cycling. It's gonna help you with hitting contact off of alignment, then getting to that next level. So we could be here, boom, boom. Okay, so we wanna react as fast as possible. Now, a more advanced plyometric series might be doing a double leg jump over a hurdle, landing on one leg, cutting to the side, and then doing another double leg jump. This is a series that we've used with Penn State running back Nick Singleton to help with his cutting ability. And if we can do that and land bilaterally or land unilaterally, change direction rapidly while having that dynamic trunk control, we can then lead to a twitchier response, which is gonna help us hit harder. So you can use stair jumps, you can use hurdle hop series, and that's gonna lead to better impact out on the field. Okay, so that third key factor is we have to look at coordination globally. So we want to improve our neural intelligence. We want to be able to recruit multiple different joints in multiple different joint angles at a very high speed. That's where using something like a hang clean is gonna come into play. We're going through multiple different joint angles at very high speeds. We have to absorb a lot of force. If we're looking at the football field, if you're a lighter dude who weighs 190 pounds and you have to make contact with somebody who's 240, you better be strong and you better be very, very fast. Okay, so we have to look at how can we use exercises like a front squat or a back squat to get bigger, to get stronger, but then also use other movements 
that's gonna train our body to recruit and fire as quickly as possible with the steep shin angles, with the DTC, and then in that short period of time at about 0.4 to 0.45 seconds. And that's where this next exercise comes into play. So we'll do a reflexive series where we're here, come down. Okay, so we're gonna come down and come forward. Now, one thing that we can demonstrate here is if you watch my shin angle, I'm coming here and I'm going forward. So I'm actually learning how to project my weight forward. I'm learning how to do that with a plate. Boom, okay? And we wanna go nice and quick. Here, and that's gonna help us move that center of mass forward. That's a big factor, is that if we're making contact, it's very similar to wrestling. We need to be able to change our shin angle here, and that's gonna lead to acceleration. Hitting hard is very similar to coming out of the blocks as a sprinter, hitting a double leg as a wrestler. Those are all very similar situations. If we wanted to get even more creative, we could go here, okay? And you can use simple progressions where we're gonna go here, boom, okay? Boom. One more. Boom. Okay, so we wanna see, can we load that posterior chain and then drive forward as fast as possible. So you wanna use technical coordination movements like a hand clean, power snatch, two box snatch. You wanna use the plyometric series, like stair jumps, like the double leg hurdle hop into the single leg landing. And then we bring in something like this, a reflexive movement. We're doing a barbell snatch to the box, a plate snatch, and that's gonna to lead to that greater neural intelligence. You can do this for five sets of three on each side. Typically do this on an athlete day. Now, all of these concepts are very challenging. And one of the big factors is that a lot of football coaches sort of just throw exercises against the wall. So they don't know how to put everything into a cohesive plan. That's where this next movement comes into play. The next exercise is probably an exercise you've never actually even seen. And this movement is going to emulate very, very high speed functionality. It's also going to be specific to joint patterns that you'll see out on the football field. But you have to know when to put these exercises into your training. And that's exactly what we do for you inside of our app, Peak Strength. If you're a football player and you're a linebacker or you're a wide receiver or you're a lineman, Typically, all three of those groups will train slightly differently. And fortunately for you, inside of our app, Peak Strength, you can go in and actually select the specific position that you're playing towards so that now you are given a program specific to your needs and your area of expertise out on the gridiron. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you can get seven free days of training. During those seven free days of training, you can cancel at any time, but the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get five free workouts. Now, the next exercise is going to be, just like I mentioned, very specific, a linebacker jerk. So a linebacker jerk is gonna get the athlete into that position of where they're out on the football field. Having that athletic position, yes, it's termed a linebacker jerk, but there's other positions like running backs, like QBs, like wide receivers that will be in that similar position when they're on the field. I like to use this with a relatively heavy load and typically we'll do this on day two, upper body power day, just before they're about to do some type of heavy pressing. So what we wanna look at is getting set and exploding as rapidly as possible. And one of the big factors, I brought up Jan earlier. Jan trained with us before he left and played for the Tennessee Titans. One of the big factors that he would talk about with the linebacker jerk is how strong he felt coming out of that quarter squat position and how well he felt that that transferred to his first step. Remember back to that story of 0.4 to 0.45 seconds when I was standing on the sideline when Penn State was playing against Michigan. That's where we need to be if we wanna make good contact. So do linebacker jerks, five doubles, build up over a couple different sets and lead to that fast power output with a large amount of weight. And that's gonna help you when you're making contact out on the football field. Now I can hear all the football players groaning. There's no big upper body exercises, Dane. I wanna get a pump. And that's where this next sweet movement's gonna come into play. I'm gonna show you an awesome upper body exercise and we're gonna superset this with another type of reflexive movement. Remember, it's about shin angles, it's about acceleration, it's about dynamic trunk control. Okay, so we need to train all those key areas and that's gonna lead us to folding people just like Jonathan Taylor when he steamrolled Jan. Now, sorry Jan, I'm really throwing you under the bus here. Let's take a movement like this, okay? I'm here. Okay, so let's say we do five really quick. 
And the reason why I'm not using a weight in my other hand is because that's where that trunk control comes into play. So I have to be focused through my gut, through my upper back, and even holding my right shoulder. Boom, here. And typically we would use this on an impulse day, okay? Possibly on an upper body power day as an accessory, but usually this would be on an impulse day. What I wanna do then is pair this with another dynamic movement, another movement that's gonna highlight reactiveness, another movement that's gonna highlight rotating with our upper body because that's what's typically is happening out on the football field. So I'm gonna take our power elastic here. This is our strength band available at garagestrength.com. And I'm gonna show you where I want this to pull me in. I'm gonna land and then I'm gonna hit with my upper body and hold that trunk control and squeeze through my abs, change my shin angle and apply force out. Okay, typically a lot of football coaches still will say, bench press isn't that good, but it is. We're on this plane when we're hitting people, when we're throwing stiff arms, when we're rapidly recruiting our upper body. So if we're here, okay, I'm gonna drop in, boom, boom, okay? Boom, boom, here, boom, boom, okay? So we can do that to both sides. Let's say we do the one arm dumbbell incline bench. Five sets of five each side. You can do that with an auditory command. In between, you rest for about 60 seconds. Now you get on this side band jump into that rotational hit. Boom, go back and forth. Slowly build up in weight on the incline bench. And then each time that you get back over here, this is using the garage strength contrast method. This is where we're doing an easy absolute strength exercise with a challenging reflexive movement. And this is what's gonna help you transfer those big muscular gains that you make from the big lifts, like a back squat, like a bench press, like a front squat, like a clean. And now we apply that with a movement that's gonna transfer really well to hitting harder. So make sure that you use all of these different exercises. We wanna focus on shin angles, dynamic trunk control, accelerating as quickly as possible. Use the cleans, use those plyometric series play around with the reflexive work, use that linebacker jerk, and then finally hit these alternating dumbbell benches with that side band jump. And make sure you head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.